Welcome back to Automation of the Week. My name is Brian Hayes, and each week I'm going to show you how to build out an automation to improve your business. This week, I want to show you how to trigger a screen flow from a list view so that you can have an automation run on multiple records at the same time. This has a lot of different use cases, but the one I want to show you today is based on the lead object. Let's say you've got a bunch of leads that have shown up and you want to be able to check the boxes next to some of those leads to then create a follow up task for yourself. It's a pretty easy way to then create a call list, go through all the available leads, check the ones that you want, and then you can call down those by going through your task list. You could use this exact same pattern on opportunities as well, or on accounts if you're looking at past customers that you might want to start reaching out to. Reviewing these records first and then having your hour of calling later is a lot more efficient than trying to do both at the same time. Here's what we're going to build. We're going to create a screen flow first, and then we're going to create a button that we can add to this list view. And that button is going to trigger that screen flow. It's going to pass the IDs of the different records that have been selected into that screen flow. And then we can do whatever we need to do with the IDs of those lead records. So let's get started. First thing to do is to go into the setup menu and bring up flows. Let's create that flow first. Click new flow in the upper right hand corner and then select screen flow. Click create. The first thing we're going to do here on the left hand side is open up the toolbox and hit new resource. We need to create a variable to collect those IDs that we select from the list. Make sure you call this variable IDS. It won't work with other names. It's just like that record ID variable that I've talked about in some of our other videos when using screen flows on just one record. In this case, we want multiple IDs. So IDS is what you need. For data type, select text and make sure you check the box to allow multiple values. Checking that box is going to make this variable a collection so we can have multiple values and then we can do a lot of different things with a collection. We can loop through it or we can use it in a get to get additional data about those different lead IDs that we've got saved. The next thing I want to do is create a loop so that we iterate over those different lead IDs and we create a task for each one of the leads that we've passed into the flow. We're not going to create the task within the loop. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to create a task variable and we're just going to keep that within our flow until the very end. At the very end of our automation, we're going to create all of the tasks at once. It's much more efficient that way and we're less likely to run into limitations. So hit the add element button and select loop. And we'll say for each lead for our collection variable here, all we have is IDs, which works fine. Don't really care if it's first item to last item doesn't matter. And now we've got our loop within our loop. Let's add an assignment variable here to set the values of our task variable. So we'll call that set values for task variable. And for our variable here, we need to create a new resource. This new resource will be a variable. Let's call it a task. And the data type is going to be a record. And the type of record that we want is the task record. Now that we've got this, essentially it's a blank task within our flow we can set different variables to it. So for our subject, we can have our subject be follow up with lead. Let's add another assignment here. Again, we're going to choose our task variable. And this time we'll choose our due date. So our activity due date can be equal to, let's create another resource. This will be a formula and we'll say two days from now. I'm going to, I'm just going to call this two days. Output should be a date value. And then for our formula, we can write today, open parentheses, close parentheses, plus two. That's just going to take today's date and add two days to it. So there we go. The due date is going to be in two days. Let's make sure that we have an assigned to value here. So again, we'll choose a task. That's our record variable. And we can choose our assigned to ID. I want this to be whoever's running this flow. Whoever clicked the button is assigning the tasks to themselves. So you can scroll down to this global variable for user. That's the user that's running the flow. And then we can select their ID. And let's add a status to this as well. Again, choose a task. We'll choose the status field. We'll have that equal to not started. You could also add priority if you want. You could add additional field values. There's actually one field that's really important that we haven't added yet. It's the who ID. It's relating this task to the lead that's in the loop. This is the most important thing because we want to create a task for each of those leads. When we go look at those leads, we want to see a task related there. So if we if we left that off, we would create a task, but it wouldn't be related to anything. So add another assignment here. Again, we'll go to a task. 
We're going to go to the who ID, also called the name ID. This would be related either to a lead or to a contact. And now we can add the ID of the current item that's in our loop. Well, the current item in our loop is the ID of a lead. So that's perfect. Select that value, and that'll go into our, our who lookup, our name ID on the task, and then hit done. So now that we've got that task here, let's add one more assignment to add the task to a collection. We'll create another new resource. This is going to be a variable. This is going to be called the tasks, since there's going to be more than one. Again, it's a record, and the object that we care about is task. What's different about this variable versus the one we just created is we're going to check the box to make it a collection. So it's a basket that's got multiple tasks within it, essentially. Click done and make sure the operator is add and then select the a task record. We don't want to choose any subfields here. We want the entire record. So we're taking our, uh, our variable for a task that has some values in it, and we're going to add it to our collection of the tasks. Click done. And this will loop over and over again for as many leads as we, as we have selected, increasing the number of tasks that are in our collection. And then outside of our loop, we can add a step to create those records. I'm going to call this create tasks. We've got multiple records to create, and we already have our collection, the tasks. Select that, click done, and hit save. I'm going to call this lead dash create follow-up tasks. Pay attention to the API name here. I'm going to copy this because we're going to need it in a second when we create the button. Click Save, and I'm going to hit Activate on this one. We can then come back to Object Manager here, pull up a lead, and we can create a new button. Go down to Buttons, Links, and Actions. Click New Button or Link. For our label, let's say Add Follow-up Task, but you could call it whatever you'd like. Uh, and then for the display type, we want this to be a list button, and we want to make sure that the checkbox is checked so that we have multi-record selection. The behavior can display in the existing window, that is fine. The content source will be a URL, that's also fine. And then for our lead, we'll do forward slash flow, forward slash, and then the API name that we just copied from our flow. So this is gonna launch our flow, and because we have that record variable that called IDs, it's going to save all the IDs automatically from whatever we've selected. Check syntax, make sure that looks okay, and then hit save. Now on the left-hand side, come down to list view button layout and click the down arrow to edit it. Here is our new button that we just created, add follow-up task. Click save, and now we can go test this out. Before we test it out though, I wanna make sure that we set our resource up correctly. If you come back to the flow, go to the toolbox, and come back to that collection variable that we created at the very beginning called IDs. I'm realizing now that I must have forgotten to mention something. We have to have this available for input. You can't just check the box to allow for multiple values. We also need it to be available for input so that the system can pass those IDs from outside the flow into the flow. If that available for input is not checked, it's not gonna collect anything. So click done on that, hit save, and then let's activate it again. Here's my list of leads. I'm gonna click into one of them just to see if we have any current tasks. If we look at Kristen Aiken here, there are no tasks for this lead. If we look at Mike Brond, I imagine it'll be the same thing. Yep, also no tasks for this lead. So they're perfect to test on. Select the leads that you wanna to add to the flow and then click the drop down button. If you didn't see your button show up automatically, you can see mine is just at the bottom of the list. Add follow up task. Now you can see that the default message of your flow finished has shown it's not the nicest way to end a screen flow. It'd be better to have a completion screen, something along those lines, but this is fine for now. If we come back to our list of leads, let's take a look at one of them and see if we have that task that's been created. There it is, follow up with lead. If we click into that, we can see that that is due on the 10th and today is the 8th, so it's due in two days, which is perfect. It's related to our lead here and it's assigned to me. Uh, I'm logged in as David Rose right now. So the things to remember in this video is yes, you can absolutely launch a screen flow from a list view within Salesforce. You just have to make sure that you have a collection variable that is text that is also available for input and that it's named IDs. If it's named IDs and you have a button that calls that flow from a list, it's gonna pass those record IDs that you've selected into the screen flow and then you can do all sorts of things with them. In this case, we created a task from each lead that we selected.
I hope this gets some ideas going for you. I'd be curious to learn all the different ways that you're thinking about using this feature within your own org. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.